The year was 1996, and one man controlled American popular culture. Every home in America was tuned into his TV show on a regular basis, and his merchandise was sold out as soon as it touched the shelves. You know, there was a time when the Turbo Man show was a top-rated syndicated show in America. Turbo Man was definitely the biggest thing that had ever happened to me at the age of 10. His weekly primetime TV series averaged 35 million viewers per episode. This is the true life story of one man's remarkable journey. This is Turbo Man Behind the Mask. I was 10 years old. I thought to myself, this character is, is changing how I live my life. I want to know if he's having the same effect on other kids. And so I went about creating the fan club. I, I am Turbo Man. <laughs> good, good to see you. <laughs> now, before I knew it, you know, I had officers. I had a treasurer. I had a secretary. The response was just amazing. Turbo Man's popularity was at an all-time high. When the members really skyrocketed was uh, when that new toy came out, the Turbo Man doll. There came a time when toys started flying off the shelves and the merchandising was everywhere. Toy stores enjoyed record-breaking sales that year, thanks to the Turbo Man doll. But Turbo Man began to find it difficult to stay humble. Turbo Man uh, started to get a bit of a swelled helmet, and uh, he became difficult uh, to work with. Uh, it is uh, personal appearances. Uh, you know, he was dismissive and often rude with the kids and their parents. I remember sticking my hand out and saying, Mr. Turbo Man, nice to meet you. I'm the president of your fan club. I, I admire you and everything you've done for kids everywhere. And it he didn't shake my hand back. He, he just actually walked by me, blew me off. Dickie Kaplan doesn't ring a bell. Next question. Turbo Man's inflated ego took him out of the public's favor. Turbo Man didn't realize he had let fame get the best of him until it was already too late. Every show has a lifespan, and uh, Turbo Man's batteries ran out after a few years. Turbo Man had difficulty coping with his loss in popularity. And after the cancellation of the Turbo Man show, the Turbo Man fan club quickly disbanded. When I knew that there was no more Turbo Man club, I knew that there would be no Turbo Man television show. Turbo Man meant a lot to a lot of kids. The show, and the man, you name it, the toys, they had a chance to last forever. They were, they were really making an impact on people. To this day, I still get letters from overseas, from prison, kids saying how much it meant to them. Yeah, it's important to me too. Well, you know, when I heard that Turbo Man had finally hit rock bottom, well, I was sad. Uh, you know, we had invested a lot of years and a lot of our energy and time into the franchise. And, uh, and he was the one who benefited the most and ultimately paid the most for it. When the headlines appeared in the paper regarding Turbo Man, you know, I, I realized, you know, my, my hero wasn't everything I had built him up to be. My fan club received one letter, I remember in particular, uh, towards the end of its tenure. When the club was winding down, we received a letter from a young boy who had, had been in the hospital extremely ill. Turbo Man uh, was uh, very insulting to a very sick child, and, uh, and I couldn't take it anymore. And when he walked out of the room, I, I followed him, and we really had it out. And, you know, he pulled the turbo ring on me. And, uh, you know, that, that was the end of our professional and personal relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I heard a lot of things, and uh, you know, it, it wasn't. It, it absolutely had nothing to do with me. You know, it's them. I mean, these people want to lie. They want to create uh, fabrications to, uh, you know, just to, to sell papers. Just, oh, it was untrue. In an attempt to counter the negative headlines, 
Turbo Man booked several small public engagements and introduced a series of consumer-friendly product lines. I hear from time to time that he's going out and shaking hands and doing what not to make a buck. And he, uh, you know, went off and, uh, you know, opened shopping centers and uh, laundromats and uh, shaking hands on car lots. You know, it's not a dignified living. Turbo Man owned a small piece of the merchandising, and so he was always trying to, uh, to find licenses uh, that didn't conflict with the toy license, the uh, lunch boxes, the t-shirts, the, the footwear, the, the, the sheets and things, and he came up with uh, some, some very strange products. I had another business um, that I also did, the famous Turbo Cloth. It's Turbo Time! This was my new future. I was absolutely excited, until the fire. When the alarm went off somewhere, it, uh, Burned a house down, uh, some, some, you know, very serious uh, time spent in burn wards as a result of that. Now, you know, the fire happens in a house. All sorts of electrical equipment is there. TVs, uh, blenders, uh, you know, all sorts of personal devices. Somehow, it has to circle in to the turbo clock. After realizing that perhaps the Turbo Man name was no longer an effective selling device. Turbo Man turned to his old friend, Booster. Booster's uh, pet salon, where, where dogs get shampooed and uh, cut cats' nails and things. Uh, anything to take advantage uh, uh, of the name and the prominence they, they once had. And this is the one that hurts me the most, because it's not uh, about me. It's about that little guy who caves so much who loved and loved and gave and gave. And that's Booster. You know, he was obviously from another planet. Uh, he wore that pink pride. He took what he had, his sidekick role. You know, that little role, that tiny role next to the, the might of Turbo Man, tiny role. He takes that little thing and he turns it into a pet salon. Every other pet salon does the regular shampooing, nail clipping, whatever. We are gonna do the pink fur. The dog was dyed pink. Half of, you know, half of his fur had been shaved off. It just, I don't know who was working at this store, but he wasn't a professional. Booster, well, there's a sad story. And, uh, you know, he kind of lives as a recluse in Soho. And, uh, you know, he, we get an email now and then. He says he's coping, but he's not what he was. Yeah. I well, started with that. And I've tried a lot of different things to, to, to bring that glorious, gorgeous, super figure back into the eye line of America. Okay, maybe some of these things didn't go so well. Maybe, maybe they were ahead of their time. I'm gonna do some things. I, I've got some ideas. Uh, doing a lot of marketing. Don't wanna go into it right now, but a lot of lines in the water. And let's just put it this way. Once a hero, always a hero.